nobody's saying women are weaker than men. And no one's saying that women are more delicate than men. But is it possible that intermittent fasting affects women differently to men? It's actually quite possible. Even though the net effect might be similar, ultimately down the line, men and women definitely undergo dif different journeys. If you want an introduction to intermittent fasting, I made a full video you can check out right there. But long story short, it means going usually 12 to 36 hours without consuming any calories. Now, of course, really good way to lose weight because you are consuming fewer calories. But it's also been linked to some other interesting changes in the body, like insulin sensitivity, which means you do a better job of absorbing nutrients, processing carbohydrates, losing fat. And it's also been linked to better autophagy, which is an interesting process by which the body kind of eats up and recycles dead and damaged cells. And it's been linked to a ton of interesting longevity benefits. So those are the two concepts we're going to be exploring in today's video because they may work differently for women because of hormones related to ovulation, potentially anyway. But let's get started with everyone's favorite topic to talk about, fat loss. So a big reason why a lot of people like intermittent fasting for weight loss as opposed to just slowly reducing their calories is that when you don't eat anything, you don't release any insulin. When you don't release insulin, you become more sensitive to the effects of insulin. And insulin sensitivity appears to be a pretty important part of your overall health. If you're very insulin sensitive, you have lower risk of like metabolic disease, you tend to absorb nutrients better, it might make fat loss easier because you're absorbing your food and processing carbohydrates more effectively. So many people see insulin sensitivity as an important component of like the ideal sort of weight loss, like losing as much fat as possible, losing as little muscle as possible. But a 2005 study had a lot of people worried about whether intermittent fasting affects the insulin response of women differently to men. So it looked at eight non-obese men and eight non-obese women. They were fasting every other day. And it found that among the women, it adversely affected their glucose tolerance, which is associated with insulin sensitivity. And it didn't do the same thing for men. So here's what Dr. Asta Kalra, she's a New York-based physician who focuses on weight loss, has to say about it. In a randomized controlled trial of more than 100 overweight or obese women, six months of intermittent fasting decreased insulin levels by about 29% and insulin resistance by about 19%, even though blood glucose levels remain the same. In another study, about 8 to 12 weeks of intermittent fasting has been shown to decrease insulin levels by about 20 to 31 percent and blood glucose levels by 3 to 6 percent in individuals with prediabetes. In this particular study, they did not see much difference in insulin sensitivity between men and women. Put very simply, the reason Dr. Kalra mentioned those two studies is that they were bigger and better than the original study I mentioned, which is of just eight men and eight women. So while we do need more research in this area, there is more evidence to suggest that it beneficially affects insulin sensitivity in both men and women than there is evidence to the contrary. But that doesn't mean there aren't any potential problems at all. So let's take a look at the way fasting might affect ovulation so we can get a better idea as to why there might be some differences between men and women in this regard. Now, very broadly speaking, and this is enormously complicated, but very broadly speaking, because of hormones related to ovulation, it appears that cycles and schedules are a little more intrinsic to the functioning of a woman's body. And big disruptions to her routine, like say, by completely eliminating food for a day, may be more stressful on the system. In fact, there are a couple of studies that suggested that when men undergo fasting, their bodies become more parasympathetic, which means they become like less agitated. It's like less of a fight and flight state. Whereas women's systems tend to become more sympathetic, which means the system is a bit more stressed, there's a bit more anxiety around it, the body's in a bit more of a fight or flight state. Since in women it's so highly regulated, any change might be clearly more visible. So when it comes to fasting, women are usually more sensitive than men. This can be attributed to the fact that women have been noted to have a, a protein called as Kiss peptin, which is uh, which research has shown that women have a higher level of kiss peptin, it creates a greater sensitivity to fasting. So, if fasting is not done properly, it can cause women to dysregulate their cycle and it can throw off the hormones. Now, I really need to make it clear that we don't have a ton of studies comparing men and women and what happens to them when they fast. Like these studies we're talking about that show some potential concerns. They're pretty small, they're not big meta-analyses, they're not of thousands and thousands of people, and that's really, really important to note when having these sorts of discussions. Nonetheless, Dr. Kalra does have a fasting strategy that she finds herself recommending for her female clients more than her male clients, which I'm going to get into in a little bit. 
So I just want to touch on one last concern that a lot of people have with fasting and women, and that has to do with autophagy, which is pretty much as close to an actual cleanse as a body can do. The word means self-eating, literally, and it refers to a process where the body eats up and recycles the parts of dead and damaged and diseased cells, and it's been linked to a ton of longevity benefits. Fasting has been seen in some studies to increase autophagy, especially in the brain, which could be why it's linked to a lower risk of neurodegenerative diseases, at least in some research. So what's the concern for women? Well, there was a 2009 study on mice and it found that among male mice, they experienced much higher neuronal autophagy than the female mice. But again, that's on mice. So here's Dr. Kalra's take. In this article, the researchers did find some variation in autophagy in men versus women. And it was thought to be related to the source of energy utilization for men was protein, whereas in women, it was fat and it, the cells were thought to be surviving longer and delaying autophagy. So there's more ongoing research on difference in autophagy in men versus women. We do understand that there is autophagy benefit, but the timings in men and women might be variable. So where do we go from here? I mean, the fact is that everyone is different, not just men and women, but every individual is different in how they're going to respond to fasting. Some people love it, some people don't love it so much. There is nonetheless a decent amount of anecdotal evidence that women can have a bit more trouble getting into the rhythm. Now, if it is something you're interested in trying out, and I really need to make it clear, you don't have to try it out, like you don't have to fast, but if it's something that you are interested in trying out, Dr. Kara has something she calls crescendo fasting, which she finds is a bit more useful for her female patients. So I start with shorter fasts, such as between 12 to 16 hours, and I will do that for two weeks. And after third week or so, I might add another day. Um, I usually recommend light exercise, such as gentle walking or yoga on the days that they're fasting. So that could be useful for women or men who are interested in fasting but have a little bit of difficulty getting into it. It is worth thinking about because most evidence does show pretty good benefits for insulin sensitivity and body composition. That said, number one, you don't have to fast. Like it's not for everyone. A lot of people just don't like it. That's totally fine. Don't feel any pressure. Number two, it's not really recommended for women who are pregnant or lactating or having irregular periods. And number three, if you have diabetes or if you're pre-diabetic or have insulin resistance, or even if you don't, it's really strongly recommended you speak to your physician before considering anything like this or undertaking a new weight loss regimen. I am not a doctor, I am not a dietitian, and weight loss is difficult. It really is a good idea to have as much help as you can get. So that's everything from me. I had a little bit more to say about how fasting affects men and women differently when it comes to cholesterol. That's in the full article I wrote on this. If you want to read it, just give it a Google, Barbend, Fasting and Women.